Hello and welcome to another episode of Budget Buggies. Um, I want to start out this episode um, by explaining a little bit about how I use my controller when I'm playing. Uh, I had a couple of questions about that on Reddit. So um, essentially I play um, with everything on assisted um, except for the auto switching move which I move to completely manual and this helps me when I'm tracking back with defenders. Um, I don't have to, uh, you know, immediately switch. They're already moving in the direction uh, that they were already. So it makes it a little bit easier to get, you know, get into uh, the situation that I switch into the player without drastically affecting their momentum. And also, I also use the alternate control. So that essentially switches the lob and pass button. So X is actually shoot and B is the lob pass. So that's that's those are the controls I use. Um, I just find them easier to, uh, you know, work with. And uh, I don't know, I just thought that, you know, some of you might find that slightly interesting. Anyway, um, we go into straight another set of matches. That's what this episode is going to be. Um, I've actually been working on a uh, tutorial for how to uh, combat, uh, essentially, uh, quote-unquote, sweaty uh, opposition. So that's, you know, if you get five at the back or something equally obnoxious um and i've been i've been encountering a lot of sweat i've been i've been drenched in sweat one might say uh, i thought that goal was offside actually but it wasn't um but yeah i've been encountering a lot of people online who've just been doing uh, things that i would generally see in in tournament play which is substituting players um immediately after the whistle after having three bronze players in there uh, you know, just to lower the rating for some reason, uh, maybe defect the handicap or something like that. And I've just been seeing a lot of those, that kind of behavior in, in regular online matches. Um, nice finish from Welbeck on the ground. Um, but yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that behavior and so I just decided to, you know, kind of make a tutorial um, on how to combat that kind of thing. Uh, meanwhile, I've been playing a few games with my Milan and my Manchester United squad. Um, not sure why he scored on his own net there. Um, he maybe he was trying to clear it with his defender. In any case, uh, it's been it's been uh, good. I've I've had mostly wins. I think I had one draw. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't recording it, and it was an extremely boring game. Um, it was a one-one draw where I scored, and then immediately after that he scored, um, and not the most uh, exciting of games really. Um, but this, this game was really good for me, uh, you know, really got my confidence back up, seven goals unanswered, um, and then an eighth uh, from Chicharito, so it's flying pretty high. I really like this Manchester United squad, it, um, the rating isn't that high, um, and I don't have Rooney, uh, I had him at a point, but I don't have, any, don't have him anymore. And it's not a high-rated side. There's not a lot of heavy hitters, uh, ratings-wise, um, in United, and that's true in real life as well. But I guess you know, Sir Alex makes them work uh, in a way that makes them almost champions. So we'll see how that uh, goes in the Premier League. Um, in any case, I came up against this guy, four-two-three-one Brazilian uh, pace squad. Uh, had to be really, really careful because if you give any of their attacking players a chance. Um, they're gonna spring that uh, great, great counterattack. That's so, uh, you know, that's so tailored for a four-two-three-one uh, combination. And essentially, with the four-two-three-one, the strategy is you defend uh, as much as possible with the, you know, the uh, six people at the back or seven, including the CF, and then you just spring a counter with the other three uh, attacking players that you have. Um, and, and I've learned how to do this extremely irritating celebration to me. Anyway, it was quite irritating to me and I've learned how to do it. And unfortunately, I've, I've, dis you know, I've decided to pay it back a little bit. It's probably not the best behavior. Um, that ridiculous celebration with the waving of the arms. But anyway, this was a really good uh, through ball from his team. And a nice cool finish from Wagner Love. Um, you know, I was quite, you know, impressed. It wasn't a through ball over the top. It was a legitimate through ball that dissected my defense. My center backs were found extremely lacking there and a uh, good finish by, by uh, Love. Um, fortunately for me, uh, the wing play 
uh, of United coming into the four here a while back with the header. Um, I'm still a little bit torn about these kinds of uh, these kinds of plays. Um, it still seems like in FIFA 12, going down the wing is is an effective tactic. Sometimes maybe a little bit too effective, uh, especially for crosses and the like. And uh, sometimes you, you take them. You know that's how United play. And that's how I like to play. Um, you know, try and match the team that I'm that I'm building. And also, I've grown to respect and uh, really value the width that a 4-4-2 formation brings it. But also, uh, every once in a while, you get a chance to do one-two uh, or a one-two aerial lob, and and the the effect is the same as any other uh, counter-attacking or possession-based formation. Um, nice, nice little chip attempt there from Chicha. It got blocked, but uh, he made sure he stayed with it to put the ball in the net. Um, but speaking about the strategy of 4-4-2 is, is you really have uh, a couple of strategies. One is the wing play, which is quite obvious. It's what the formation is set up to do. And if you didn't do wing play in 4-4-2, then you should really pick another formation because you have two players wasted out wide if you're not going to if you're not going to use them but also the two strikers up front gives them uh, gives it a lot of uh, potential to uh, have a lot of crossed headers and a little bit of link up play between the two strikers as they go on goal uh, Chicharito with a cool finish there didn't need, feel the need to cross it over to Welbeck he just took care of business himself so it was another good win 6-1 from the United squad and I think the matches are a little bit out of order I usually um, interleave my match I'll play one with my uh, Milan squad and one with my United squad and then I came up against this guy Cheeksters Kingston Kikes he uses bronze players to lower the team rating in in the ma matchup screen um, I guess I don't know his chemistry takes a terrible hit it's only 64 chemistry I don't know if people like this understand that while it might be extremely clever to have bronze players to lower your overall rating for, you know, the attack, mid, and defense, uh, taking that hit to chemistry really causes your team to play much, much worse uh, than the players uh, are capable of. This guy had a, a pretty good team. Uh, it was a Serie A squad just like me. And he also happened to have... Excuse me. Um, he also happened to have Ibra in his squad. So it was going to be a, a battle of uh, Ibrahimovic versus Ibrahimovic. Uh, this guy needed some time to sub on his players. So he paused it right as soon as he got possession. It was in the 3 minute 43 second mark of the game. Um, not really sure uh, what takes this long. I just decided to skip, I think, at some point. Yeah. Um, so he'd subbed in, or I think he hadn't had a chance to. In any case, I decided to just keep going. Um, and I think this was at the point where the subs actually happened. Uh, all his bronze players go off, and some pretty good uh, gold players come on. Giovinco, Abate, and Ibra coming on for their counterparts. And uh, at this point, I was just like, really? <laughs> I just had a really face on for, for about five minutes after that uh, move. So I decided to show him you know, what it's all about. Ibra crossing it in for Hernandez. Hernandez getting in front of his defense uh, and just heading it home. There's not really nothing the goalkeeper can do. This happened shortly after that uh, substitution, so uh, I felt pretty good rubbing it into his face. That you know you may have uh, bronze bent and bronze squatted yourself in, but uh, you're not going to stop uh, that kind of a goal. And Ibra again, fantastic goal. I've become a huge fan of taking uh, corners short. Uh, I feel like it gives you a little bit more control over movement in the box. Uh, it unsettles the defenders a little bit as well. It gives you chances like that. Full stretch there um, from, I don't know, Julio Cesar it is? I'm not sure. Buffon or Secklenburg. Anyway, those are the three goalies you expect in Serie A. Full stretch, but there's really nothing he can do. And again, uh, you know, I, I really like... Just taking it short and being able to, you know, do things like that. I don't know what he's trying to do here. I think he was trying to be a little bit clever or he left his controller. Um, certainly took me quite a while to <laughs> recover the ball. But once I did, um, cool finish from Elia. Uh, <laughs> I want a celebration. I, that celebration just, even when I'm doing it myself, it pisses me off. I, 
I, I don't even know what it is. There are just certain celebrations that just take me off. That is, is the prime one among them. Um, I think I saw one of the other YouTubers doing it, and it just I was just like, I have to find out how to do it. And then, you know, hopefully get over my hate of it. <laughs> um, Ibra, you know, almost putting it in. Uh, but Hernandez there, Abel Hernandez there to pick up the scraps. Um, the, the other thing I will say is that Ibra, he's a fantastic player. Um, his finesse shots, though, are not the best. Uh, I've seen other players like even Abel Hernandez and Elia have much, much, much better finesse shots. He just doesn't seem to have the curve on his shots or the placement, really. Um, Ibra is really a power kind of guy. If you power your shot in, most likely you'll hit the net. So, you know, if anybody's looking for a review or comments about Ibra, that's, that's my one thing I will say about him right now. He is fantastic in being in the right place for headers. So if you have him in the squad, you'll probably get a lot of headed goals. That match ended well, 4-0. This guy, I got a thousand coins out of it. And also I got to annoy him. Um, and I, I don't know, I feel like I got back at him. Maybe he'll reconsider having those bronze players in his squad. Uh, or maybe not, I don't know. Um, I derived enjoyment from it, I guess. Uh, kind of selfish there, but in any case, that was a good match. Uh, well won. Uh, moved on to the next one. And before I could, I found out that uh, Chiellini got injured in that match, which was, uh, you know, it was quite bad, but uh, it's all right. He, I think, got injured on the arm. We'll see. Robert Hernandez, uh, fresh card, although I got it off the market for 650 coins and look at that return on that uh, transfer fee I mean look at that seven games played 12 goals scored all online I mean this guy's just a beast for 650 coins the minimum price for a shiny gold player it's just it's ridiculous so I uh, you know immediately re-upped his contract um, and then I also had a few uh, a mid couple of midfielders that I need to renew Chiellini arm two days duration or two matches duration sorry um i ended up putting suleiman tari in the squad um as a replacement for emmanuelson 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 has been good for me but i just felt like i needed a little bit more steel in the middle of uh, the pitch i just needed someone who can hold up the ball a little bit more and suleiman tari uh, from milan really fits that role for me um so he'll be there i think in the next next few games uh, this game I actually played with my United squad, uh, Hernandez Welbeck up top as usual. Um, and this was a hard-fought game. Um, he had the kind of uh, Premier League squad that I have, that I've had uh, before with a lot of good players in it, and Welbeck and Lukaku up top, or Welbeck and Sturridge, I guess. So those are very popular combinations. I would recommend them to anybody. Quite cheap. And they give you a lot of bang for the buck. Um, Sturridge in particular, Welbeck as well. Um, and Lukaku, of course, uh, well known. And then Hernandez just doing his thing in the 86th minute. Um, you know, peppering this guy's defense with crosses. But Joe Hart is a god. He was stopping everything. And you'll see at the end of this that Joe Hart actually gets man of the match. And I think he deserved it. Even though, you know, I scored and won the game. I mean, he was just a, a pillar of unbreakable unbreakable goalkeeping in this game I really had to come up with special things um, to get goals against him and this was a penalty in the dying minutes of the game and his defender got red carded for that tackle uh, let's let's take a look at it again I didn't notice it initially but uh, yeah it was kind of he didn't get the ball it was kind of late and I'd taken the shot I'm not sure why I got the penalty but you know I'll take it uh, and I took uh, uh, I think I chose Valencia because of his shot power. Um, and, you know, to beat Joe Hart, you have to do this kind of move. You just have to give it a decent amount of power and you just got to slam it, you know, right above his head. Uh, chances are you'll get it, even though, uh, you know, he doesn't move his player. Um, that was a really good goal from Valencia. And that was one of the only ways to beat Joe Hart as a header. Or, you know, a penalty like that. Otherwise, it'll just end up stopping everything. Look at that. Man of the match, 7.6 rating. So you can tell it was not the best match. And he was trying to use Agban Lahore that he subbed on. And, you know, uh, you know, he's trying Walcott. He's trying all kinds of pace tactics, but didn't work. 2-0. Uh, 
Um, and that's the end of this episode. I'll catch you guys later.